What's something creepy that has happened to you that you still occasionally think about to this day? Part 3. Also, please keep supporting us by subscribing our channel. Account 1. When I was 13, I was in a bookstore and a grown ass man approached me in the manga section and started asking me about my love life, if I had a girlfriend, etc. I left and watched the escalator from outside to make sure I wasn't followed. Next thing I know, he's standing next to me and asks me to help him move a couch into his van. I kindly say, fuck no, and he jogs across the street and out of sight. I go inside and tell an adult who responds, yeah, they've been getting complaints like that. Account 2. One time there was this huge snowfall in my town, on Christmas Day, which is weird for us. Anyways, me and brother and sister and sister's boyfriend and a couple others all went tobogganing on this hill at the ball fields. There were also some trees at the park which I climbed and then just let myself fall out of backwards and land in the snow below. Was a great day. Had lots of fun. A while later, I was walking near those trees and the snow had melted down to reveal they were surrounded by rebar stuck into the ground with tape around them to stop people going up to them, I guess. I must have fallen right in between the pieces of rebar. If I had been in just a bit different of a position, I'd have probably been impaled by rebar on Christmas Day, still weird to think about. Account 3. This happened around 2008. One day, I heard the voice of a young Indian man, about 18 to 20 years old, saying, Hello, hello. While I was using my laptop, I had always kept the camera taped over, used virus software, periodically checked the download folders, etc. But when that happened, I freaked out that I'd been hacked and went through every possible safety check again, down to seeing which programs were currently running, whether the neighbors were accessing my Wi-Fi, was it one of those loud pup virus ads, and if my camera or microphone permissions had been turned on, couldn't find a thing? It happened two different times in the year after that. Same man's voice, too. I no longer use that laptop, and I still keep any laptop cameras covered because God knows how that person got a hold of my computer. Account 4. When I was around 13, 14, I was home alone, upstairs, when I heard somebody busting open the kitchen door yelling, Fire, fire, get out! I didn't smell anything, nor did I think that there was that could ignite a fire. I had ordered takeout, and all the things that could set a fire were off, so I decided not to get out and called 911 explaining everything. The police came and found muddy footprints in the kitchen, along with the kitchen door busted. Account 5. When I was around 23 years old, I was on a bike ride and stopped at a park to use the restroom. While I was in the stall, a balding middle, aged man suddenly stuck his head up over the wall and looked down at me. When he saw me looking back up at him, he looked startled like he was expecting to see someone else, and immediately got back down and left. I finished up quickly, because I thought something weird was going on, and I had left my bike sitting unlocked outside the restroom door. When I got back out, my bike was still there, but standing right outside the bathroom door was a 12 and 13 year old boy who I'd never seen before who looked right at me and struck up a conversation about my bike. Just pointless small talk. I looked around and saw that the creepy old guy was still milling about in the parking lot, watching us talking. I was barely saying anything, basically just going, yeah, huh, okay. But the kid kept talking to me until the creepy guy gave up and got back in his car and drove off, as soon as the gym's car was out of sight. The kid said something to the effect of, thanks, bye, and then waved and walked away. Account 6. One day during a break between classes in school, I went and dropped off my books in the classroom I was having next before going to hang out or grab something from a vending machine or whatever, and was the first to do so since my last class was really close. Right after I put my books down, I heard an incredibly deep voice say my last name very slowly and clear as day. I have a very unique last name. I doubt I misheard from above and a little behind me. I figured it was someone messing with me, but the room was completely empty. I did a quick lap and checked anything that direction big enough for someone to hide, and the floating ceilings couldn't support anyone's weight. No idea what it was. Probably just hearing things that aren't there, but it was a bit creepy. 
Account 7. Man, this one is a doozy. I saw my abusive ex-stepmother in a grocery store. She immediately rushed over acting like she missed me or wasn't a sadistic prick. She had an old, ugly, greasy man with her. I live in a small town, so I can't exactly blow up at my abuser without being hounded and gossiped about and all that stupid shit. She pulls me in for a hug. I stand still. Then this man, who I had never seen in my entire life, pulls me into a really long, drawn-out hug. He was playing with my hair, telling me how pretty it was, and I think he sniffed it. I did the weird push, a way thing you do when you don't want a hug, and he eventually let go. But the nasty little fucker kept playing with my hair. I was like 13 or 14 and looked like it, so he knew that I was extremely off. Limits. But that didn't stop him. The store we were in has a butcher shop in the back. The nice lady with a large knife invited me to go in the back and see if I could find and point out the meat I had mentioned before. I hadn't mentioned any meat. I was there for a pack of pepperoni. I'd usually avoid going into a secluded area with an unknown woman carrying a butchering knife, but I happily went back with her. I chilled in a corner for like ten minutes while she chopped meat and watched me a bit, and then I decided the coast was clear thanked her, and bolted. I didn't even get my fucking pepperoni, I just wanted out. You can bet your ass I took a long shower with extensive cleaning. Fucking nasty. Recent events have brought that memory up, and I wish I could go back and thank that lady, but I don't know if she'll remember me. I've thought of telling her boss that she saved me from an abusive pedo duo, but I don't want to get her in trouble for letting me into a staff. Only area that probably has health regulations. I'll never forget her, though. Account 8. My brother and I went on a walk in our rural neighborhood when I was 12, 13, and he was 10, 11. We only just turned the corner on our street when a small car with four large men slowed down right beside us. When their car got a bit ahead of us, they sped down the road. It ended in a cul-de-sac, so there was nowhere to go. Either on of the side streets that were dead ends or back to the main, back road, I got a bad feeling about it, so I dragged my brother home he didn't fully understand what was going on and was mad, but my gut told me to run back home. Account 9. Yuck. I had one of my dad's friends message me on Facebook, I was 14F, telling me how he can't stop thinking about me and that he wants to hug me and feel my boobies against his chest. He worked for my uncle and I told my dad ASAP, that man was fired instantly. I feel bad for his wife and children. Wish I could find them and tell them. Account 10. When I was about 10, I was walking around the neighborhood with a few girls that were a couple years older than me, who I did not know very well. They were the neighborhood cool girls in my mind and I was tagging along. After a while, we noticed a car slow down behind us and the driver was staring hard, we moved a little faster and he kept pace, so we took off running. It was a huge neighborhood and he was persistent. At one point, he even threw the car in park and started to get out. Thankfully, we were faster. We dipped through shortcuts and ran through yards, but he knew the neighborhood well. To my adrenaline-fueled child's mind, we ran for an eternity. We finally got to one girl's house, but she lived with her grandmother, who had a strict one friend allowed in the house policy apparently regardless of an attempted kidnapping. So two girls went inside, and two other girls and myself had to get to the other side of the neighborhood. We had gotten a couple streets over when we saw him again and took off running. He was alert and still persistent. Just as I was coming to terms with never seeing my family again, one of the other girls waved down a minivan, and it was her mom. She drove me home, and I got grounded for taking a ride with a stranger. My mom still doesn't believe me to this day. Account 11. My dad told me to rake some leaves in our front yard when I was like 12. I ended up working for a few minutes, then felt eyes on me. You know the feeling. I turned around and my neighbor across the street was taking pictures of me. So obviously. Right. When he saw me, he put his phone down and turned around. I immediately ran inside and told my family. None of them believed me. I'm 18 now, and he's still my neighbor, and I have been creeped out ever since. I have to close my window blinds all the time still because I always feel like he's watching me. Account 12. When I was a child, I was playing out in the front yard of my house. 
when a white van pulled up on the road. The sliding door opened, and a guy in his early 20s waved at me to go over to him. Luckily, I was a shy kid and got scared and ran inside and told my parents about a strange man in a van calling me over. My parents raced outside, but the van was gone by then, and it is was only as an adult I think back and I realize what a serious situation that was. I could have been abducted that day and worse. Account 13. I was walking to school one day like usual, and this van passed me, just as I got to the end of my driveway and was about to step onto the road to cross it. I remember two guys in front who were both staring at me. A white van with a blue stripe that ran horizontally around the middle of it. But then they turned the corner and sped off down the road. I was a little unnerved, but crossed the street and went down the same road they'd sped off down. I saw them further down turning the corner up ahead at what was kind of a crossroad. A few minutes later, the van was behind me, and slowing down to match my pace, they'd circled the entire block just to get behind me. I didn't even think. Just reacted on pure instinct and ran for my mate's house a few doors down, praying they hadn't left for school yet. I can still remember running down their driveway and just body, slamming the back of their car in absolute fear. Luckily, they hadn't started reversing yet, they drove me to school, cops got called, as did my mum, and the cops left thinking I was just overly hysterical and that they probably weren't, after me. However, not even a week later, a friend of mine was nearly grabbed from her letterbox two streets away by a van matching the exact same description. For some reason to this day, no one believes that I was possibly about to be kidnapped, despite believing my friend's story. Neither of us had adults who saw the van. Both of us ran for a trusted adult. Yet when she reported it to the cops, they put an alert out. Occasionally, I'll see a van with that exact marking, the same blue stripe, and have to remind myself that it was nearly 30 years ago this happened. Account 14. When I was around eight years old, I lived in a nice, quiet neighborhood and would frequently take walks around the block, sometimes alone, sometimes with my mother. One evening before sunset, my best friend and I decided to go for a walk together. We were about halfway through when we were approached by an older man who was walking with two dogs. He was panting and seemed frantic and asked us if we knew whose dogs they were. We said no and kept walking, trying to get the fuck home as quickly as possible because his presence alone gave us goosebumps. Even though we were walking away quickly, he followed us and asked us to help him find out whose dogs they were. To go knocking on all of the neighbor's doors and ask everyone, we continued to say no and picked up our pace, which he then matched and continued following us, shouting, Let's check this house. Help me find their owners. At this point, we sprinted the fuck back to house. He ran behind us for a bit, but tired out really quickly. I have no idea if he was just somewhat socially challenged and didn't understand that two eight-year-old girls are not the people to ask for help or if he was hoping we would knock on that door, which I now suspect was his house, and then push us in and do who knows what, but I'm happy our instincts told us to nope the fuck out of there and go home. Account 15. Used to dispatch, call, take 911 in a moderately sized city, was working overnights once, and we started getting tons of calls about UFO as over the area. It was a weeknight in summer, and lots of people out walking or drinking or whatever were seeing this thing. We probably took 100-ish calls about them for reference. I might handle three or 400 calls myself on a shift, and as the supervisor that rotation, I took over trying to resolve it so everybody could focus on the typical stuff. We had a hot phone to the airport ATC for air emergencies. Got to use that once for a plane crash. That was fucking terrifying and they had absolutely no idea about what was going on and actively resisted getting involved, little while later, got a hold of an FAA hotline, and they definitely had a UFO policy, but were only interested in taking info. They didn't disseminate anything. Talking to them felt like an interrogation, and I left my badge number instead of my name. Eventually got a hold of a duty officer at an Air Force base relatively close by, he told me they were aware of the situation, they were monitoring it, and to consider it a closed issue, whole thing was a trip. Definitely got vibes like I was an extra in the opening of Independence Day. 
This was before the days of neighborhood Facebook groups or Yik Yak. The local radio stations had tons of pictures up on their websites for a while afterwards.